I'm just testing. I'm scheduled to give a little talk at five o'clock uh, as a part of the key talk series. This is just a test. It's about 4.58 right now. I guess we will start at five o'clock. I'm live. Am I audible? Yeah. Am I am I audible right now? Am I audible? Yeah, yeah, I'm, 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 okay, fine. Yeah, I'm talking to the technical team. I hope I'm uh, audible. It's five o'clock. Okay, I've got the clearance that uh, I am audible. Uh, so I think. Uh, with no further ado, I think I'll uh, kickstart the uh, discussion. Uh, so uh, it's, it's five o'clock and I, I hope everybody's starting to hear me and see me. Uh, good evening, uh, namaste, and especially for all the viewers of uh, Gujarat, uh, you know, came Cho. Uh, ideally, I would have liked to hear the word uh, Mazama, but I guess in today's situation, probably uh, that word may not come out that easily, or maybe they will, but uh, Irrespective, I sincerely hope that all of you are safe and healthy with your families and your loved ones uh, in your respective homes. Uh, my name is Vinesh Menon. I represent the Ampersand Group. Uh, it's a group which has been founded by uh, Mr. Vrstam Kheravala, who is our Chairman and uh, Managing Director. And we have interests in education, uh, skilling and healthcare, uh, both in the private as well as in the government uh, domains. Uh, we have, uh, you know, Across the country, uh, we run almost about 40 private schools uh, under the brand name of Vibgyo. And uh, we also have uh, associations with a lot of central and state governments. And we do a lot of work at state governments, uh, especially more than 2,000 government schools. Uh, we do a lot of work there. And uh, we also run a lot of skilling programs, uh, especially with uh, adult youth and uh, you know schools, government schools. We do a lot of skilling there. So that's about us. Uh, uh, first of all, uh, Dr. Manjula, Anand, and uh, Team Calorex, thank you so much for inviting me. Uh, K-Talk, I think, is a wonderful initiative. Uh, I think I, I'm very aware that over the last four weeks, uh, many webinars have been conducted on multiple platforms, education platforms, Facebook, uh, Zoom, uh, etc. And I think it might look like there's an overflow of webinars uh, coming your way. Now, at least I did feel that sometimes. Uh, but uh, if you really think about it a little deeper, now I genuinely believe that uh, over communication is uh, far better uh, than under communication, especially during these times. I think uh, uh, communication keeps us updated. Uh, it keeps us bonded. It keeps us united. And uh, these are very challenging times. And I think uh, we need to do that. Uh, and, and I think it's better to do that than to not do it. Most webinars I notice are really across three primary sectors. Uh, I see a lot of webinars around education, of course. I see a lot of webinars around healthcare, which is really the need of the hour, and uh, also around the financial services. Uh, and, and I think I think this, it's critical that these three sectors get a lot of uh, discussion and a lot of exchange of thoughts and ideas. I'm not taking anything away from the others. Uh, clearly, there are many many sec sectors out there like transportation airlines, travel and tourism, hospitality, uh, who are really affected by the uh, by the COVID-19 situation. OK, so let's you know come to the topic. Uh, I think uh, the topic in front of us, it says uh, sustaining K-12 education without brick and mortar, uh, without brick and mortar classrooms, to be precise. Uh, 
if you really look carefully, you will see a question mark in front of it. So you will see sustaining K-12 education without brick and mortar classrooms, question mark. So in a way, it's it's like an open-ended question to all of us. Uh, maybe, maybe not, impossible. Many, of, many, many can be the answer. Uh, honestly, that's an answer which probably we are learning as we go along. But what is interesting is that uh, education industry has been participating in many such seminars and many such conferences over the years. I have a lot conferences uh, by the way, I'm going to be talking in a, in a bit of English and Hindi. Uh, please don't mind my Hindi. I'm a South Indian. And therefore, you might see the Hindi being a little out of context. Or maybe the grammar might go all over the place. So forgive me in advance. Uh, so back to what I was saying. A lot of seminars have happened in the education industry over the years. I have participated in many of them uh, with my industry colleagues. And a lot of industry leaders uh, have been part of that. And interestingly, there's not one seminar or one conference that really goes, uh, you know, it, there's not one seminar that ends without having a topic on technology. Technology, online, rote learning versus experiential learning, online versus offline, Blackboard versus smart classes, uh, you know, the, the, the need of digitization, uh, human intervention versus uh, robotics. Uh, there are so many conversations that have happened. And, and at the end of every panel discussion, uh, you will see a lot of tali. Uh, getting, getting, you know, there's a lot of talia and a lot of clapping, and then everybody's very excited about the conversation. But after that, after the conference is over, we again get back to routine. Uh, some edutech companies uh, make way into some schools. Uh, there's a large portion of schools out there which are untouched in terms of technology, uh, and and life goes on till we come to the next conference. Now somebody has been watching up, uh, watching us from up there, and and suddenly appears Mr. COVID. Or ek subah COVID agya. In fact, I don't know if you all know this. Uh, COVID-19 is just, I believe the virus is just about a gram in terms of weight. Uh, it's quite interesting. And this one little COVID-19 has put the entire world to a standstill. Uh, entire mankind has come to a has come to a halt. And all of a sudden, uh, the word technology and the way of delivering education is suddenly changed. Now, now technology and online is no longer an option. People are actually talking about this almost like an everyday uh, affair. And that's uh, interesting because... All this has been discussed multiple, multiple times, even before COVID uh, came long back. Anyway, I'm not going to hear, I'm not really, I'm going to make this conversation pretty generic. Uh, like I said, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm going to do a mix of English and Hindi, but I'm not going to really get into classrooms, technology, benefits of technology, classroom, how to do online ka benefits, kya hai, problems. Kya. I'm not going to get into all that. I'm just here to share my thoughts, uh, just, just share my experiences or whatever I felt uh, after seeing whatever has been happening. Uh, there are many uh, uh, much more qualified and much more uh, you know, you know, uh, reputable academicians and educators out there who I'm sure will talk to you more about classrooms and, 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 and how to teach and, and et cetera, et cetera. So I'll let, that, uh, you know, I'll, I'll let that space remain for them. I'm just going to share my thoughts. So a quick backdrop. See, one thing is clear. Now, never before have we seen a situation like this where the entire world is talking the same language. Uh, social distancing, masks, cleaning of hands, closure of schools. These are all words which are common across the world. I mean, never before have we had a situation like this where every news channel across the world would be 95% covering something like this, a common topic. Uh, you know, and this is, this is quite fascinating. If you really look back around the 6th of March or 7th of March, India had really not started talking any of these things. And across the world, if you notice, about four to five countries had started to shut their schools. Almost a little over a month, as of April 24th, you will notice that 192 countries have shut schools. 192 countries have shut their schools. 1.7 billion students, 1.7 billion children have been disrupted from their routine and they are now sitting at home and unable to go to school and, 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 and learn. Some of these countries, of course, have, have tried to reopen. Uh, in the last one week, uh, a few countries have tried to reopen this. Denmark is one of them. Uh, but even then, it's not been very smooth. Parents are very scared to send their children to the school. Uh, there, is a, uh, there is a lot of debate and discussions about what to really uh, open first. Should we open pre-primary? Should we open secondary? Uh, should we have three days in a week? Monday, Wednesday, Friday. So there are all kinds of questions which are coming up. So this remains a... <clears throat> 
point of discussion. This remains an enigma. Uh, let's really focus on India. Uh, we are Indians. This is our homeland. This is our motherland. And 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 you know, in a lighter note, I'm reminded of how very very recently, in most of the seminars, we used to keep talking about uh, Finland, education system of Finland. Ko adopt kar lete hain. Finland jaisa karte hain. And I remember our ex uh, MHRD secretary, Mr. Anil Sorup, uh, clearly saying that, "Bhai, uh, Finland, London, these uh, are land pe mat jao. Just focus on your homeland. Our homeland and our country is so wide and diverse that our no system can work here." And that's exactly what's happening even in COVID. We cannot really just emulate other countries. We have to have a complete plan of our own. And that is what I actually acted on. Actually, is happening in India. 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 Uh, look at us indians our entire lives have changed right uh, as a customer has life our lives have changed as a student our lives have changed as a parent our lives have changed as a teacher as a policeman as a scientist as a startup entrepreneur as a shopkeeper as an industrialist uh, as a as a fortune 500 industrialist as a spouse uh, as a companion uh, as a as a speaker as a listener everything has changed our entire mechanism of running things have changed in fact it is so uh the change has been so dramatic that even the words that we now understand are very different from what we were used to red orange and green is something that we were used to for traffic signals and suddenly these have become words synonymous with hot spots red hot spot orange orange hot spot green hot spot kitne orange green ban gaye hain kitne red se orange ban gaye that is what we hearing right now then we've got you know a lot of the business guys and a lot of uh, you know business and especially Uh, in our everyday business, we keep talking about numbers, P and L, top line, bottom line, how many customers are there. All of a sudden, that's gone, and we are now listening to uh, a very different kinds of data. How many tests were there? Right? I mean, from school tests and children tests, test now means how many testing was done for checking out po- corona positive. How many got positive? How? What is the recovery rate? What is the fatality rate? Uh, then there is this interesting calculation about. कितने दिनों में केसेस डबल हो चुके हैं इन इंडिया कुछ दिन यू नो मे बी अ कपल ऑफ वीक्स बैक आई थिंक इन अबाउट थ्री टू थ्री एंड हाफ डेज द केसेस वे डबलिंग करंटली इट इज अबाउट टेन पॉइंट फाइव डेज विच इज अ वेरी गुड साइन क्योंकि टेस्टिंग भी ऊपर चला गया इसके बावजूद अगर अगर नंबर ऑफ केसेस दस या बारह ग्यारह दिन लग रहे हैं डबल होने में दैट मीन्स देर इज एन इंटरेस्टिंग चेंज एंड इट स्टार्टिंग गेट बेटर बट ऑल ऑफ अस आर रियली स्टार्टिंग टू यू नो गो इन टू दैट इन टू दैट्स फ्यूर uh positive se yaad aaya the word positive is no longer about uh, motivation hope you know be positive abhi to positive bolo it's all about corona positive so people are now trying to associate these kind of words with all the uh, negative areas social ka matlab tha let's you know be friendly i am a very social person you are a very social person but abhi to social ke samne distancing aa gaya so now it's no longer about just being friendly And on the contrary you have to actually say stay away so social distancing is what we are all talking about so our entire life has changed and in this whole change the real question is how do we handle it how do we move forward uh, what is the way to really tackle some of the key problems in 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 our in our life uh, no i don't have the answers this this conversation is not about me giving you the answers uh, you know i might have answers for my own self probably just as how you would have answers for your own self but we cannot put ourselves in each other's shoes uh and because each one of our lives is different but probably what we can do is to join up and see how to handle this together and that is what we are attempting to <clears throat> see right now so let's uh, uh you know let's just visualize the situation so mere samne i'm i'm visualizing a big sea you know samundar aur is samundar mein bahut it's 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 a very rough sea uh there is there is rains thunder lightning Uh, the waves are going very high uh, the sea is very choppy uh, it's 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 a very rough sea aur usme bahut sare boats hain ships bhi hain boats bhi hain boats with motor bhi hai boats without motor hai bade bade ships hain uh, sails ke sath chote trawlers hain there are all kinds of boats okay there is noise all around the place there is enough you know everybody is confused aage kaise jana hai wave sabko bounce kar raha hai everybody is watching each other coming under pressure some people are falling into the sea so that's really what is happening and in the middle of all this there are helicopters coming giving us speeches ki bhai ye karo wo karo don't do this don't do that so 
it, you know, when you really see all these things and when you see this chaos and when you see the number of boats, there is an old saying, we are all in the same boat. But no, I don't agree with that. I don't think we are in the same boat. We are in the same storm. We are in the same storm, but we are not in the same boat. We are in different boats. And therefore, it is very, very important that to, to, to sensitize and to be aware that what is happening to me and my boat may not be what is happening to you and your boat or may not be happening to that person and his boat. So, ye jo empathy, hai, ye jo understanding, ye sensitivity is very important. Hai. And, and it is impossible for us to sit in one boat and tell the other person that you boat ko is chala lo. Because we don't know. right? Everybody is having their own survival problems. So the only way to tackle it is to be empathetic and, and at least you know have some form of understanding with the other person when you're on this choppy uh, waters. The Indian education system is pretty much similar. I think the Indian ed- ecosystem, let's, let's put it that way, is pretty similar. There are close to 1.5 million schools uh, across the country uh, and, and more than 330 million students, uh, close to about 90 to 100 million teachers. Uh, there are regulators, there are schools and government, there are government aided schools, private schools, urban schools, rural schools, tier two, tier three. It's a huge ocean out there. And, and if you really look at it, it's like the boats, all kinds of, there are, there are chains of schools there are independent schools. There are schools which come under scheduled caste and scheduled tribe. There are schools that come under Ministry of Minority Affairs. There are all kinds of schools. There is IB board, the CBC. Everybody has now got into a state where we are all riding on choppy waters. So it's really difficult to understand what's happening unless we just break it down to simply four broad categories. And probably if you try and get a little sensitive to these four broad, broad categories, probably uh, we might be able to try and do something and ensure that we are able to sustain through this uh, through this period. Those four categories are, in my in my eyes, one the student, two the parent, three the teacher, and four. I'm not sure how many of you are going to think about this. Four is the school trustee or the school owner or the school leader, whoever is you know at the helm of the school. I think these four categories are very, very important. And then there is, you know, the regulator, the government, school associations, parent associations, uh, teacher associations. Yes, are here. But I think these four areas are the ones if if you really try and understand these four categories really inside out, probably there is a there is a way we can try and, you know, try to uh, go forward as a uh, in, in a united uh, fashion. <clears throat> Before I go forward, uh, I'm sure some of you might be putting up questions. I'm, I'm consciously not looking at the chat box right now. I'm trying to go on a flow and try to just express my thoughts. Uh, it is not a very long monologue. I know monologues in one way speeches are a little boring at times. Uh, I should be winding this up in about 15, 15 to 20 minutes. Uske baad we will focus on uh, you know any questions that you have, which I might or might not be able to answer. So back to what I just said. Among this entire choppy sea and a lot of boats and a lot of things happening in the Indian ecosystem, education system, I'm just concentrating on four areas, the student, the parent, the teacher, and the, the, the school trustee, the school owner. Teacher matlab teacher, principals, you know, staff, everybody who's actually there trying to do work for the school. I think the student is probably the most <clears throat> uh, is the most affected and as at the core of the whole whole situation. Simply because we are talking about children, we're talking about the future of the country. Okay, if you get a feeling that these children are simply sitting and enjoying the holidays and you know happily sitting with the legs on the on the table, uh, I think we are all very mistaken. Aisa nahi hai. I think uh, children are smart, unko pata hai ki kuch to gadbad hai. Unka freedom completely curtail ho gaya. They are unable to go out, uh, they are unable to play with friends. Uh, they're unable to play their favorite cricket game. Uh, they're unable to, you know, there are little children who, uh, I've got a friend whose child asked him, he, uh, Papa, when can I go to school and uh, share my tiffin box with my, uh, uh, with my, you know, classmate or with my benchmate? Now, these are all small little things that, that, that have made the life of a child. And that is something which we need to be very aware of. And it doesn't matter <clears throat> uh, from which age to which age. Uh, you know, children can be from five years to 
to to uh, you know 15 years and everybody's got a got a problem below 5 years maybe 4 to 5 years i would ignore a bit because typically by 4 and 5 is when they start to realize that something is not right uh, you know a, a 5 year old child can for example see the moods of the elders uh, moods of the parents other and other members of the family are constantly talking uh, you know people are worried uh, news dekhte hain to ek 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 certain emotion dikhte hain all this is being absorbed and we all know especially educators on this group that the maximum absorption in a child happens between 3 to 6 to 7 years of age they are absorbing and and, and we need to be aware of this uh, similarly when a child enters into the teens uh, he or she is again in a very teenage is not a very easy situation to handle uh, and 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 in such a situation when you're closed behind a closed box only in one place not able to go out not able to express yourself again there are complications that that come up there a uh, lot of 12th standard students 11th 12th they must be getting very worried about their future career counseling must be at its height right now it's important uh, because as it is starting of 2020 we were in a period where we did not know ki agle 10 saal mein kis tarah ka jobs honge and now with covid coming in it's going to get even more you know uh, unsure people are going to wonder ki bhai iske sath kya kya hone wala hai so all these are going on in the child's mind uh, and 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 we shouldn't ignore that and therefore i think we should do everything possible uh, to actually channelize this bundle of energy inside a child's mind into something positive uh, i think i think keeping them engaged and keeping them going forward and having having them to do something solid is what is really the need of the hour of course in, <clears throat> in many schools uh, <clears throat> excuse me i just have a bad throat thank you <clears throat> in, in in many schools uh, government schools especially the governments have automatically passed children so in up to 8th standard they getting automatic pass so 6th to 7th automatically ho gaya 5th to 6th automatically ho gaya but is that right kyunki wo hone se bhi fine while they might be very happy the actual learning is missing so somebody has to think about that probably we are not probably we are probably we don't have an answer for the exactly kaise karna but these are all what is happening in a child's life uh right now now in this period <clears throat> in this period is when a lot of schools a lot of schools a lot of teachers within the 7 to 10 day lead time completely changed how they wanted to engage the child they brought in online classrooms they brought in technology edutech companies started to work with schools and teachers to find support them they increased the capacity increased the load they tried to do things to just keep it going Now, this is not easy because teachers i think started to multitask you know apart from doing the other things at home they also try to teach and and they are completely taken away from what they used to do earlier into a completely new kind of uh, uh, new kind of way of teaching which is which is not easy but they they try to do it now is darmia there are a lot of uh, critics naysayers who come and say ki uh, yaar online se kya fayda hai schools are online isliye chala rahe hain taki they can take fees i think that's very sad i mean look around you what are your options koi option hai can you get a teacher into your house and make him make him or her teacher child can you teach your child and you know ensure that the curriculum moves on and 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 you know these are all you know these are all practical things that we need to keep in mind so i think it's it's absolutely critical that a parent and a teacher collaborates and understands the reality of the situation and we must know that the problem of the child is not the teacher's problem nor is it the parents problem yet it has to be a joint effort to get this thing you know to get this whole uh, jugalbandi going and and instead of trying to be supportive to this cause there are quite a few who's trying to be critical to this cause and i i i think it's, 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 it's that's very unfair yes i admit online is not perfect we need a human touch we need to have something to be done which is uh, you know which which actually collaborates along with the online way of teaching but then that can't happen the way in in the, in the current circumstances perhaps the parents can do it but yes maybe the teacher and the parent can get together and take it to a different level of engagement where the student and the children can be even made to do mental math for example <clears throat> uh try and find out the size of the drawing room uh, length breadth height i don't know there are various way to bring in maths into the system you know look at the number of tiles that are there on the floor and say how many tiles are there and what is the total square inches that the tiles occupy there are lots of ways to do this so mental math analytical ability 
uh, ability to communicate, enhance your reading skills. There are so many things that one can probably do to uh, you know, keep the kids engaged. So I think we all need to realize that the student is at the core of this whole thing and the parent and the teacher has to collaborate to get this going. There is no point in trying to look for ki uh, perfect ni hai, online mein ye problem ho raha hai, mute button teek nahi aa raha hai, to usko unmute karna padta hai. It is very difficult for the child to concentrate. Uh, you know, child ka pita ji bhi kaam kar rahe hai, ye bhi kar rahe It's becoming a little difficult. All this, we are, at a, we are in a very, we are in a warlike situation. <clears throat> and the situation mein iske chara, iske, iske siwa koi chara nahi hai. But that is what I wanted to, you know, highlight when it comes to the student. Please, I make a sincere appeal to all the parents. Please get together and, you know, get down to engaging the child. I'm not getting into subjects. I'm not saying ki science padao, math padao, ye padao. No, I'm simply saying engage the child and keep the child active in a certain direction so that he or she does not get distracted. An idle mind is a devil's workshop. In a child's case, at least, it starts becoming very fearful of what is happening around you. So that's my, you know, my, my appeal to everybody. Uh, so I'm hoping that you all will do that. Now let's move to the parent. Now while I understand that the student is a core, please understand the life of a parent. A parent is the income earner for the house. The parent is somebody who have their roles cut out. They're also under pressure. They are earning money day in and day out to try and see that you know the house runs. And a big portion of that running expense is towards the child's education. You know, in India, at least about 10 to 12 percent of the earnings are kept aside for education. And if you don't have your own earnings, you actually end up borrowing. There's a big percentage of parents out there who have borrowed money to ensure that the child is educated. You look at the economically challenged parent. Most of them say, ki, uh, you know, most of them say that. Uh, sorry, I'm just OK. Sorry. Most of them say that I want to learn my children so that they these are all, you know, a parent's life is not an easy life. On an average, an Indian parent, statistics show that an Indian parent spends at least about $19,000 or close to 12 lakh rupees a year, uh, you know, to try and 12 lakh rupees to not a year, sorry, 12 lakh rupees to get a child educated from pre primary all the way to undergraduation. This is an average. Okay, we're talking about the length and breadth of India, you know, almost everybody. Uh, through a survey which is which is done in such a situation how do you think a parent must be what a parent must be going through i mean imagine the pilot a commander or a pilot of an airline who is really worried as to what's going to happen to him because the airlines are not taking off you know if we if the lockdown extends for another 30 to 45 days the airline industry will go bankrupt that is what some very very senior airline uh, in the, you know airline uh, honchos are saying so in such a situation, imagine the pilot's thinking process. A chef of a five-star hotel whose job is to go and cook out some good dishes. Hotels in here, so he must be worried. So these are all normal. So I think a parent going through the worry, ki mera ka kya hoga, job, salary cuts, it's, it's a very, very sensitive, natural thinking that happens to them. And I think it's very important for the school and the teachers to also understand this. Now. In, in the middle of all this, there are these rumors. He, your school is somebody who is filled with money. They are just ripping you apart. They have a lot of money. The school ke jo owners are sitting on cash, pe cash ke, ke upar hai, and I think they can easily take up these things. They can wave fees easily. No, that is incorrect. That's not true. One rotten apple cannot spoil the basket. School owners and schools do not have this thinking process. At the same time, for a parent who's also undergoing stress, I think when they hear these things, it only makes their, let's say, their ability to not have that faith go up. That, 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 that's a problem. Well, faith aapko wapas lana chahiye. And please understand that this is a long-term association. A school, once a child gets into a school, it's almost a 12-year plus association with the parent and the child. And the school's only objective is that the reputation is maintained and I get this child out after the 12th standard in a proper manner and you know ready for the next next level SA schools are not out here to try and get you know uh, to try to try to just take advantage of you so please be aware of that and 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 i have a request and an appeal to parents whatever it is whatever be the situation 
आई थिंक तीन चीजों पे आप कॉम्प्रोमाइज ना करें वन इज द प्रीमियम ऑफ योर इंश्योरेंस ओके डो नॉट एवर स्टॉप दैट वॉट एवर इट बी नंबर टू इज वॉट एवर यू डूइंग टू कीप योर हाउस और योर योर रूफ अब योर हेड ई एम आईज हो या जो भी हो प्लीज टेक केयर ऑफ दिस एंड नंबर थ्री इज एडुकेशन एक्सपेंसिस प्लीज डोंट कॉम्प्रोमाइज ऑन दीज थ्री एरियाज आई अपील टू यू I know, I know it's difficult, but try and weigh every other expense against this. Uh, I understand that you know the government has given a little uh, advisory, a very noble advisory that schools ke bachon ka fees nahi lena chahiye. Uh, you know, we have to continue to. You know, I understand the nobility of this, but the government's advisory is really for a large spectrum of the country. It covers all kinds of, like I said, remember the boats on the sea. It covers all kinds of boats. each boat handles it very differently so my god sake don't just go by the advisory just go deep into it and try and understand and talk to your school and see how you can reach some kind of a mid path or some kind of a, a conclusion i mean recently <clears throat> uh, you know even in the sole government advisory let's take an example uh, transportation uh, i understand that transportation ka fee dena nahi chahiye uh, parents are very very valid when say that when they say ki lockdown hai to buses to nahi chal rahi hai correct hai but the fact is that those buses are there drivers are being paid the salary maintenance is happening emis are being paid by the school i am just giving an example main nahi keh raha hu ki kal se transport fees de do no i am just trying to give a perspective to everybody ki aapke jo boat hai us pe kya chal raha hai it's not very easy for the other boat to see so please get into a collaboration and a kind of a unity to try and see how to handle this that is my appeal to the Uh, uh to everybody out there who are dealing with parents uh, i would also like to take the liberty to share something beyond uh, education especially for the parent or especially for the income earners you see i used to be in the banking and financial services uh, i have been part of banks and nbfcs and therefore there are some connections that i still have with uh, mutual fund managers and economists who keep giving i keep attending some of these uh, seminars and webinars now the fact is that while covid has hit and brought everyone to a to a halt the fact also is that there are some good things that are going to happen to india so first of all let me just give you an example jab 911 world trade center new york pe attack hui thi when the aircraft came and banged into the world trade center people thought that the airline industry will never take off again okay but the airline industry took off and it took off its style after that right so things move on 2007 8 there was a big economic recession the entire world started suffering india was no stranger to it the markets fell sensex crashed but we recovered today because of the because of what china has done the world is having a major problem against china countries like japan are giving incentives to companies to get out of china this is an opportunity for india we could probably attract everything that china was attracting probably we can start attracting very soon prices of oil is crashed big advantage for india so there are a lot of these little little things that are happening which are probably going to be good for india so clearly india's gdp which is supposed to grow at about 5.2% might have slipped down to 2% but please understand it is still positive 2% baki sare countries are negative china ko chhod ke china is about just a little under india so apart from apart from all that you know so what i'm trying to tell you is that india is still a solid destination for foreign investors to come and put money it is just a temporary period that we're going through 2020 will look it is going to be a little difficult but i am sure that 21 is going to be a big bang uh, reform back for india and i'm appealing to all the parents income earners everybody who's struggling to try and worry what to do with school school fees education etc please remember teen cheezon pe aap कॉम्प्रोमाइज ना करें इंश्योरेंस घर का खर्चा और गदर हाउ टू कीप योर हाउस एंड एडुकेशन ट्राई नॉट टू कॉम्प्रोमाइज ऑन दिस एंड द रीजन आई मैंशन अबाउट द इकोनॉमिक फैक्ट्स अ स्मॉल लिटल झलक इन टू दैट वॉज ऑली टू मेक यूर रियलाइज दैट लाइफ इज नॉट गोन एंड थिंग्स आर गोन मूव ऑन एंड आई एम श्योर मेनी ऑफ यू आर कीपिंग टैब ऑफ दिस मुझे बोलने की जरूरत नहीं है येट आई थॉट आई टेक दिबर्टी टू टू टेल यू नाउ एट द सेम टाइम यस आई अंडरस्टैंड दैट you know the parents who are parents of children in government schools there there is a different kind of a challenge how do you engage those children how do you get the parents to understand kya karna hai uh, migrants ke bachche hai to yahan pe thoda sa issues hai 
and I'm hoping that just like how an economic task force was created in the finance side, uh, I hope that uh, there'll be an education task force created by the government uh, so that they can start tackling some of these issues. It is nice to know that last one week, if you look at news, ko, the mainstream media, jo hai, most of the mainstream media headlines has got a coverage on education. Finally, it's not coming before. So I, I genuinely believe that we should have done this earlier. The government should have started getting a little more involved in this. But chalo, they they are sahi. Uh, you know, the fact is that it started to happen at least now. Okay, so that that kind of covers the parent and the parent uh, category. I'd like to now move on to the teacher category. Teachers, gurus, you know, the most respected set of people. These are the folks who continuously teach. They teach children year after year. Children come, children go, teachers remain. I'm sure all of you who are having school groups or old alumni groups of schools, I'm sure abhi bhi aap is teacher ke baare mein, us teacher ke baare mein abhi bhi baat karte honge. Aap log toh naukri kar rahe hain, all in good positions or you're all doing all your work today, but the teachers are still talked about and they are still there if they're not retired. So these teachers are a very, very, uh, they do a very thankless job, uh, you know, and, and one must recognize that. So, so, so their life is not easy. Saal o saal, they have been used to sitting inside a classroom, uh, interacting with children face to face, uh, and and discussing how to how to teach. And all of a sudden, they've been told to go online, sitting inside the four walls of their homes, uh, you know, trying to understand how to manage the family and the and the uh, children on the on the on the screen. And they're supposed to you know conduct the classes perfectly. It's not easy. And, and these teachers are in their own ways, they are spouses, they are homemakers, they are also parents, they are also an income earner. Just like how the parent is an income earner, teacher is also an income earner. They are also worried, ki kya ho hai? So please understand, the, the level of worry and sensitivity is equal in a teacher. So I, I, I request all of you to realize this, that teachers too are going through this period with a lot of fear and a lot of scare. Yet, they are doing everything that they can to try and teach the children. Okay, imagine we, you know, suddenly, uh, if, if, if you know, when, when, when teachers, for example, uh, I'll give you an example just to show what kind of changes the teachers are going through. Uh, you may or may not do it now, but I, you know, if I just hold my hand like this, you know, look at my finger, my my thumb, my right thumb is over my left thumb. When I put my hand like this, by default. Automatically, ka habit hai ki mera right thumb, left thumb ke upar hai. Now I'm just going to change it. My left thumb ko right thumb ke upar dal I feel very different. I'm not used to this. It affects me. Because by default, my right thumb is on the left thumb. Now imagine ye chota se ek change. Ek chota se left thumb or right thumb mein itna change. Itna, itna, itna I go through such a such a different feeling then. Imagine what the teachers are going through when they have to suddenly move from their classrooms and get into online. So please have some, some empathy for them. There is an issue. Uh, it, it is difficult for the teachers to see what is happening. Jab fees nahi aare, you know, they are also aware that, the, that their school trustees or owners are going through stress. Uh, they are also thinking every day that my salary aega, ki nahi aega. I understand the government has said ki pay karo, but does it mean that teachers are, you know, I say nahi ki teachers are sitting very aram se because the government has said that. They are understanding the conflict. They are right now caught between the situation and they are understanding the conflict. So they are going through a very difficult period and I think it's important to respect them and make them feel that we are with them during this period. Uh, so so I, I implore and appeal to everybody to try, try, and, try and do that. Uh, you know, teaching, I've always mentioned, is like a, like a clean collar. I don't know if you have heard of this example called a clean collar concept. If you have a white shirt and you have a white collar and you're walking around, कोई आपके पास आके शाबाशी नहीं देता कि भाई आपका कॉलर वाइट है बहुत क्लीन है बट उसी कॉलर पे अगर कोई दाग लग गया ना या कोई इंक वहां पे गिर गया देन दे विल कम एंड से कि भाई तुम्हारे कॉलर में दाग है अदरवाइज नोबडी विल कम एंड से कि यू नो वाइट कॉलर वेरी गुड टीचिंग जॉब इज लाइक दैट नोबडी कम्स एंड कीप्स सेलिंग देम दैट ग्रेट जॉब यू डन अ ग्रेट जॉब इन टीचिंग बट इफ समथिंग गोस रॉन्ग अ लिटिल दिस मच आल्सो इट गोस रॉन्ग मार्क्स थोड़ा गिर गया बच्चे को थोड़ा प्रॉब्लम हो गया दे इमीडिएटली गो आफ्टर द टीचर and they said, look, you have done this, you have done that. That, that is important for us to realize that, that, you know, that a teaching job is not, not a very easy job. And therefore, my appeal to everybody is that in the spirit of Guru Siksha, 
uh, please, please respect all the teachers, collaborate with them. Uh, they're doing everything that they can from their home. Uh, and and, and they, I don't think they're doing it to get their salary. They're doing it because they love your children. They're doing it because they actually want to keep the learning process going on. And, and, and trust me, I have seen some of these teachers and the way they are inside their houses trying to do this. It's not an easy job. So that's my request to all of you. Please have a little bit of empathy towards the teachers. Okay, I'm going to come to the last uh, point, which is the school trustees, owners, uh, you know, school leaders. Uh, sensitive area because typically nobody talks about that. And none of you might accept this, but these are the most effective folks. I'm not an owner. So please don't think I'm saying this because I'm, I'm a school owner. I'm not a school owner. I work for a school owner, but I've seen this. I've seen what happens uh, to folks who have financially, emotionally, they've invested themselves into a school. And, and in a situation like this, they are in a conflict. Okay. They have, they have to keep the institution going. They have to infuse confidence in the parent. They have to infuse confidence in the teacher. They have to infuse, uh, they have to keep their connection going with the government. Uh, and they have to make the students feel that the school is there behind them. These are the very folks who get into sleepless nights, wondering what to do and how to kind of go through this period. How do you keep the, how do you keep the, 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 the payments going? How do you continue to pay the salaries and say, chalo, fees jab aega, aega. it is something that is going on in their mind. And, and, you know, at the same time, let me tell you, a lot of these school owners, a lot of these trustees, they have been, they have been meeting together, trying to figure out how to handle this. Uh, and let me tell you the one thing that comes out from everybody. And I've been part of some of these, some of these meetings because we're all part of school associations like FIKI and CII. And one thing which keeps coming out is that they keep saying, parent ko taklif ni hona chahiye. We have to show empathy. We have to show that we are with them. We have to show that the children are being taken care of. This is the common line which keeps coming out. Learning has to continue. Sustaining a, the school has to happen. And yet we have to figure out, yet let's go to the government and tell them our situation. Yes, And, uh, you know, that uh, uh, makes us, uh, we need to realize that we should not therefore misread these people and, and be victims to rumors. We can't be thinking that, you know, a school owner is sitting there having a great time and watching the fun. Not at all. They are going through a lot of difficulty even during this period. So I just want you to take a pause and just think about them a little. Schools have stood by you through the thick and thin of all the years. When it is time for you to stand by the school, just step back a bit and think about this and try and do that. Okay. So now there are, you know, let me tell you who uh, uh, I wanted to. I just, I'm just referring to something for a minute. Um, okay. So all this effectively means, you know, when we just talked about the student, the parent, the teacher, the school owners, school trustees, uh, the, and, and the government and what they're trying to do. All this effectively means that as long as you understand these constituents and what is going on in their lives, you know, like those boats, if you understand what's going on in their lives, you will start feeling a little better that this is a period which is dark. We have to go through it together. We have to unite, we have to join hands, and we have to start going through this period as one big family, right? So if I simply take a student, a teacher, a, prince, a, 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 a parent, a school owner, and the government, you know, the regulators, these five, if, we, if this has to become a mutti, if it doesn't become a mutti, if it remains five fingers and you know each one has got their own direction, then this is not going to work. And it's not going to last long. So I just wanted to, you know, get everybody to realize that ultimately every year of schooling is about 200 days to 221 days, right? 800 to 1000 hours of learning. This 800 to 1000 hours of learning make both sort of time nickel here, fair enough. But all is not lost. If you really, if you really get down to calculating for the rest of the year, I know we might have to take Saturdays, Sundays along. I think we'll be able to pull it off. I think we'll be able to recover. So I think it's not impossible to recover the lost time. In fact, it is also very nice to know that the MHRD minister came on a webinar last week and started addressing parents. So a certain sense of, you know, seriousness has started to come even from the government side, knowing that this mamla hai. This has to be looked into. And let me tell you, I think when as we go forward and as we get into the lockdown restriction being removed, my sense is that the government is going to be very, very 
uh, it's going to be very very careful about two areas the elderly and the children so i think schools may be the last building or the last institution to open up this is my feel okay and therefore i think it is absolutely critical that we all get in together to uh, to 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 kind of go through this uh, uh, period together uh, in conclusion i think uh, uh, you know a few points i think change is constant uh, there is no way that we can avoid this one has to be uh, a chameleon one has to know how to adapt to the change this is where the great indian jugaad comes forward we are known to be able to handle these things uh, people in america and people in other countries they are so process driven that choda sa process idhar udhar hat jaye to log phas jata hai but we know how to handle this so let's 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 you know bring up that whole indian spirit of jugaad in, in in such times never give up i think we need to stay resilient we need to stay strong uh, we need to really know that dawn ke pehle night is the darkest it is darkest before dawn right so we are going through that period where i'm sure there'll be a solid dawn and a great sunlight but tab tak thoda sa darkness ko jhelna padega i think when the real calamity hit us the number 3 is when the real calamity hits us this is when indians actually get together this is when indians start to uh, un- unite together be the flood situation uh, be the terrorist situation i think we have all got together this is a silent virus it's like a terrorist attack silently i think that's what we need to do number 4 have faith in the ecosystem have faith in the teacher have faith in the parent have faith in the school owner have faith in the student uh, and 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 of course have faith in the government uh, there is no other choice there is no point in sitting and constantly criticizing one against the other ki teacher ne ye nahi kiya parent ne ye nahi kiya government ko ye karna chahiye tha no that it it is not going to work uh, school owners aise hain it's not going to work we just have to have faith hold each other and move forward and finally let me tell you this school buildings are closed school is not closed school buildings are shut because of a problem called covid 19 lockdown hui hai malls band ho gaye hai uh, you know stadiums band ho gaye hai uh, everything is shut shut a school building is got shut schooling is going on schooling services are going on please have that faith that everything that's happening inside the class inside the classroom is somehow trying to get done even through the technology and online and ed- edutech companies and academia are working very very closely to kind of get this whole learning process continued in collaboration with the parents and the teachers so that is really you know in a, in a nutshell what i what i wanted to just express like i said it is just a expression of thought uh, i would i would be uh, happy to uh, conclude right now and take any questions uh, that that uh, any of you may have thank you thank you for being such a patient listener and and, and i'd be happy to take some questions i will just give me a second i just have to you know wear my glasses and i'll uh go through some of the questions which are there i know this is not a two way communication so let me see okay a lot of lot of people were saying right i agree with what i'm saying thank you so much people learn how to adjust themselves to ad- adverse conditions absolutely right uh okay i'm not seeing any questions yet that's very either they don't they find everything that i said useful or they not able to pull through a question okay very true very true thank you thumbs up thank you so much we are not prepared for the scenario we pushed into uh yeah okay fair enough we may not be really prepared uh, it's, it's it's all i can say is that the entire world is not prepared and the only thing we can do is to really uh, uh, you know like i said unite communicate talk keep away from rumors uh, understand that you know everybody is out here to take care of each other's interest and i'm sure we'll pull through this okay again there's a lot of true uh, okay not, not a single question okay not at a question where to find out the solutions okay yeah okay fine go for the best after the lockdown completion absolutely and i'm sure there'll be the best i mean like i said it's darkest before dawn guys iske baad to i mean we have to we have to see the light there is no there's no other way out okay uh 
thank you thank you thank you all good good compliments for me very very humbled i think thank you so much for for agreeing and reaffirming what my thoughts are thank you lots of preparation would be required once we open the the or restart the academic sessions absolutely absolutely a lot of preparation in fact that is what i'm trying to say you see we need to be probably we need to start preparing for it right now uh, do you know that airports in india are already started doing drills un log kafi drills kar rahe hain ki kaise agar passenger aata aayega to wo kaise kahan pe khada hoga kis tarah unse baat kiya karna chahiye you know how which are the doors that they should use ek passenger aur dusre passenger ke beech mein kitna distance hona chahiye all this is being actually it is being uh, you know it is being done right now practice or abhi right so similarly i think we also need to start doing that it is time for principals and teachers to start getting into brainstorming sessions it is time for all those uh, those platforms uh, you know digital elets techno media business world education both are as a platforms which conduct seminars maybe they should now start bringing all of us together to start discussing this yeah absolutely i think that's a very important point ki we have to start preparing for when the lockdown will uh, will open up i think you're right uh how do you see the future of classrooms going ahead okay so that's the first real question that has come uh i i i genuinely believe that uh, uh it 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 may not be the same i'm not i i i certainly don't think that classrooms and buildings are going to come to an end no i think wo rahega but i think the whole mechanism will change a lot uh jo technology which was like an option so far technology was like a complement it was like a supplementary uh you know support system i think it thoda aur it will get, get a little more emphasis but if you're saying that the human teacher is going to not be around sorry i don't agree with that the teacher will definitely be around the student will be there the teacher will be there i think unke beech mein ek platform aane wala hai which is going to make life much more easy for the teacher and the student uh, so so i think i think that's really the uh, answer and the other thing that will happen is i think there'll be far more emphasis on hygiene cleanliness uh, you know i remember long long back when i was a child we used to have periods and 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 times where you know we used to all stand in a queue and they used to check our nails they used to check our tongue they used to check our eyes uh, they used to check if we have got any other uh, uh, you know whether we are unhygienic or hygienic i do i i i think we might start going back to some situations like that where we get a little more obsessed about about uh, cleanliness and and ch children hygiene my speech is all the answers to expected question thank you so much sima appreciate that uh okay do you feel that the schools can or should open the open the distance of 2 meters uh, okay uh, let me understand this do you feel that the schools should open if the distance of 2 meters need to be maintained i am not sure how how i should answer that question uh, i think uh, i think in schools especially with children i don't think it's fair to do that uh how can you tell two children that you can't you know that you have to maintain a distance and not touch each other hug each other go together uh, a school is all about bonding right school is all about physical bonding and actually sitting with each other and doing a lot of things unka pura social social upbringing hai that's something that's something that happens in a school so i think uh, my sense is that once the schools open uh, yes you can regulate the number of days you can say that sir teen din ko school pe aa jao baki din mat aao or you can try and keep the benches a little far from each other you can do a lot of other hygiene stuff but i think if you start telling children ki especially the younger children if you start telling ki uske sath mat jao iske sath mat jao don't go with, don't go so close i think somewhere you're actually scarring their whole concept of social etiquette so that is something which i am not very happy about so i would i would prefer the schools actually open once everything is a little real settled and you know the curve comes down and and there is no relapse of cases i i would go for that because it's it's at least the smaller children we shouldn't subject to that the bigger children people are getting into their 7th and 8th standard and all that i think they understand this so i think there we can still do it but smaller children no okay what percentage of parents will go for homeschooling in the post covid 19 period i don't know i i can't i can't really answer this question i can't put a percentage to it uh i think you need to ask yourself whether you will go for it uh and 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 whether you prefer this kind of teaching but again like like i mentioned i doubt if it'll ever be this versus that i don't think it's going to be 
uh, homeschooling versus brick and mortar schooling. I think it's going to be a blend of both uh, because uh, somewhere a child's greatest asset is to try and know how to live in society. So that you cannot take away from him or her. And that can only happen in a school. So probably uh, I would say that we can't, we should not get into that kind of a situation where we ask a parent, Ki aap kis ka schooling karna chahte ho? Ghar pe ki, ki school mein jaake. I think we have to have a blend of both. Only thing is that there'll be a far more integration of technology into this process. And I think there'll be a far more, uh, uh, you know, what's the word? I think there'll be, there'll be, there'll be slightly more awareness uh, and, and there'll be far more understanding as to how to, how to balance between home, home learning and, uh, and schooling. I think that's what will happen. I think there'll be far more engagement on the visual audio uh, ways. I think I see, uh, I see maybe Monday, Wednesday and Friday are schools. On Tuesday, Thursday, there might be online learning. So that's what I see. But I can't really put a percentage to it, uh, uh, Mr. Ajay. Okay, cool. I think uh, <clears throat> I think there's nothing more right now. We are at uh, 5.55. I think that's a good 55 minutes of conversation. Uh, I'll just wait for about another probably uh, a minute or two. And if there is no more questions, I think we could uh, you know, wind up the uh, wind up the speech. Okay, do you think school can open into shifts of educational into shifts of education a little later, a little better? Uh, sorry, let me repeat that. Do you think school can open into shifts of education a little better? Yeah, I mean, like I said, I think there'll be something that'll happen. I don't think it'll open the normal way, at least not for the next three to three to four months or five months. I have a feeling this year there'll be a lot of there'll be a lot of care. Please understand. India is a big country. India is a country where, uh, you know, if something really goes wrong, we won't be able to come out of it. Yojo, there is an old saying, prevention is better than cure. I think that is going to be applying the best in a country like India. Uh, we have to watch out and 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 the prevention mechanisms. I don't think we can cure a problem in, when it comes up for a, for a country as vast as this. So, so I think to answer your question, I think... Uh, uh, yeah, I think there could be shifts. I, I can't really answer that right now, but I think that will happen. Uh, what is the future of students who gave SAT exam uh, going abroad for studies? Uh, I can only see my nephew is now working towards going abroad. He's going to US or rather he wants to go to US. Obviously, there is a little bit of a you know break or a pause, uh, but I don't think it will come to a grinding halt. Yes, there'll be there'll be a pause for a while. Uh, look at all of us. I think all of us are going to take some time to really go out. Agar kal mall school jayenge, I doubt if you're all going to just go there, go there and start shopping uh, from tomorrow. We're all going to wait and watch. So thoda se ek, ek gap to aai jayega. And I think there'll be lots more, uh, lot more of MOOC or, or online courses that's going to happen long distance. Uh, and, and probably that's a way to uh, do it. I think, I think international travel for children to go and study there might take a little more time at least Parents may be a little apprehensive of, of, of them going. Please share some of your previous moments, memories of your school days. Uh, okay, thank you for that. But uh, I guess that's not, <laughs> it may not be the right platform to that. There are a lot of memories, good, bad, uh, but mostly good. I think if I look back, uh, school has been a great place to be in. Uh, I've, I've just got a school group right now. We've got about 350 odd uh, participants or members in that group. And they're all my classmates, uh, right from third standard to 10th uh, standard. And we all have a good time connecting up on that. Uh, so I think I think school is a great memory place. And that's what I'm trying to that's what I'm trying to emphasize that, that that please do not let, uh, let your mind get fed in by things which make you have a lack of faith towards your school or your teachers. Uh, I think that's very, very important uh, to to not have. So that's uh, something which I'd like to uh, emphasize through that through that example. Otherwise, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yes. Uh, yeah, I think thanks a lot. Uh, yeah, I think I'm going to just kind of wind down now. Uh, it's it's 5.57. I don't know if the, I don't know if Anand is listening to me, but uh, Anand, I'm going to take the liberty to, uh, to, to kind of uh, say thank you to you. It was a wonderful uh, uh, session in the sense I, I really expressed myself and uh, I, I'm very humbled by some of the uh, uh, written points out here. A lot of people seem to be agreeing with what I'm saying. So that's made me quite happy and I'm very humbled about it. 
thank you once again for inviting me on the show. Uh, and, and please keep the good work going, everybody. And united we stand. Stay safe. Stay healthy. And wish you all the very best. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye. Thank you.